Hey, buddy. Why don't you say hello? <laughs> <laughs> People can see you, you know. They can. They can see you. Where he st st telling your uh -huh. followers that you started a live studio. Okay, come That's on. That's right. All okay. right. Bye bye. See you later. Look at you. you may not come in. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Hello, hello Rochelle, hello Nicole. All right. Hold on. Hello, check, check, check. Hello, good morning. Oh, no. Hey Charlie, whoops, what happened? Hello, good morning. I think that splitter might be breaking. Hello? Maybe. <clears throat> Sounds fine to me. It, it doesn't ever sound good to me. No. And when I use my headphones without it, it sounds like way louder. Mm -hmm. Which I don't good rem morning. remember it happening that way in the past. Check. Hey, Adina. <clears throat> hey, Lily. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Nicole. All right. All right. <clears throat> check, check. Check your levels. Check, check. Hello. Check. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Talk again. Good morning. Check. Hello, everybody. Hey, Brittany. Check. Good check. You, what is happening? Good to see you guys. Four, three. Goodness gracious. Hello. Talk again. Hello. Good morning. Check. Good morning. Check. 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 I was turning the wrong dial. Hello. Check. Check. Brian Balloon lifestyle. <laughs> Not sure what that means, but good morning. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. I, want, I wanted to make something funny out of it, but I couldn't. Okay. That's okay. <coughs> That's okay, Mel. I hear you, it says. Okay. All right. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Test. Are you ready? I think so. Okay. Day 36. You want to hold that up? Back in the swing of things. Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> Why was that so funny? I don't know. All right. <clears throat> okay. Ready. Hello and welcome to the Anatomy of Marriage podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. Good morning, my name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and today is day 36, titled Questioning Faith, Long Distance Relationships, and Broccoli Fights. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. We have over 200 episodes about all sorts of marriage-related topics. We share our own journey of almost getting a divorce and we are so happy that you're here to grow and have an awesome marriage with us. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. As always, today's episode is brought to you by Audible. You can visit, visit audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage to get your free audiobook on us. And please do that. It gives us a little kickback and it gives you an amazing audiobook. It gives you a life kickback because it changes your life. So That's right. we live on Audible. Go there. And um, this is a uh, entertainment therapy advice real life podcast but do not replace it for real life therapy as a licensed marriage and family therapist go see a counselor if you need to you could just say what i wrote it's a lot faster oh, well. uh, before we jump into your questions we're going to read a review of the day which is five stars from southern beard and bread mm -hmm. <laughs> it says all right um, it says be prepared to grow i listen to a ton of podcasts yet even after 200 plus episodes i find myself enjoying the content in this podcast in the beginning you can hear the echoes of gears grinding in their relationship but once you've heard the episode when Seth, a marriage and family therapist, diagnoses his adult attachment disorder, you will hear the couple in a different tone. Mm. I'm not crying, you're crying. There aren't many podcasts that can compare to the depth, transparency, earnestness, and beautiful messiness you'll find in this content. You'll hear what it sounds like when a wife admits her faults and when a husband leads in consistency. Mm. Thank you, Seth and Mel, for giving us the resources you wish you had. You are welcome, and thank you for the amazing review. That really is an awesome review, and uh, that's pretty cool. It's we very, very it. cool. We bring it. We're the best podcast out there. All right. <laughs> if you have uh, want to review the show and have us read it on the show, please do that. It's awesome and fun. Yep. We'll 100% read it. So welcome back, guys. We took a two-day little break and it was good and let's get right into the questions and remember we're live on instagram and on facebook live so you guys can interact with us in real time there just go there and subscribe so okay questions hey guys first of all thanks for the podcast they've been super helpful i have a question so my husband and i met at a church when we were in high school we got married at the very early ages of 19 and 20. we built our relationship on the foundation of God and that is what brought us closer together and made us strong 
14 years later, of course, we've grown and changed, but my husband now questions everything he has ever believed in regarding God and religion. He doesn't like to talk about it with me, probably because I'm judgmental, and it scares me to think that he's going to become an atheist or something, and I'm just sh not sure how to deal with it. The last three years, he has told me he has had more questions than answers when it comes to God, and I've still continued to pray for him and speak into existence the man of God that I know he is, and I've tried to stand in the gap, per se, for him, but when... But when do I get answers? Okay. When is enough time for him have to have his questions answered? What if he doesn't believe in God anymore? And how do we keep on raising our children and having an intimate relationship that was built on this foundation that is now cracked and fallen apart? Taking everything built on found that Taking foundation. Taking everything built on that foundation down with it. Sorry. I want to be understanding and supportive of this time of questions, but I'm fearful of the outcome. Any advice? Yes, lots of advice. A ton of advice here. It's a great question, though. Mm -hmm. It's a very good question. It is a good question. And in this, I am reading that it is scaring you more than it is doing anything else, I think. And I understand that uncomfortableness. And on one note, if I was the same person I was one year ago or five years ago, then I would want to just go away. Right? What? You'd want to if just go I away? If I was the same person that I was Get one year ago. Get away from the relationship? No, just away. Like, I'm like, okay, so I'm reframing the idea of growth and change and asking questions. Mm -hmm. I am so glad that I'm not the same person I was five years ago mm -hmm. or one year ago, right? Growth is like a very normal process for everything. And like, you, you don't like the saying, but you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I imagine that, so you guys are like, you know, 32, 34, probably years old, or 35, and this is a very <laughs> normal thing to be questioning, right? Like, if you weren't questioning it, then I would be even more worried about that, and it is scary, but there is no time frame on this. Oh, he's, you know, looking for these questions, and there's no answers yet. It sounds like your time frame for this is making you more upset than anything else, right? Um, I believe that God takes care of us no matter what kind of questions we have. And I'm almost saying relax and don't worry about it. Yeah, it's uh, tricky because what it feels like, and hopefully we don't have any flat earthers out there, but uh, <laughs> what it feels like is the fear that someone, you know, however many hundreds of years ago would have thought that the earth is flat. Someone's saying it's round? Like... Everybody freak out. Right. We're all gonna die. Like right. no, nothing really changed other than our perception of something. And it's really tricky because and and just bear with me, all the people who are like deeply Christian, I, I'm a Christian, uh, I believe in God, but I don't think that my mind, which is the size of a small bowling ball, is like really the small. It's the smallest mind. It's tiny. I don't think that I can comprehend like a thing that potentially made universi. Universi? <clears throat> Excuse me. Plural of universes. Universi. I see. So, but <laughs> but there's nothing to be afraid of in that. Like right. it, it's very similar to someone saying the earth is flat, the earth is flat, the earth is flat, the earth is flat. The Bible says that it's flat. Everyone says that it's flat. And then you realize there's no edge. Right. And then you go, "Now what?" Now what? You hold on to the furniture. Like right. there's no, nothing is actually changing. Nothing has actually fallen apart. It's just Oh, I actually see things slightly different now. And and mm. I want to really challenge, and I'm not trying to make you feel bad the, for the person who wrote this in. Like it says, you're take, uh, uh, it says something like, you're standing in the gap. How do we go on raising our children and having an intimate relationship that was built on this foundation that has now cracked and fallen apart? I don't actually think anything has cracked and fallen apart. I think right. that's your fear, uh, fight, flight, freeze, going, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. But I don't actually think anything has fallen apart. And, and the thing I want to say in that too is your husband fell in love with you. He did not fall in love with Jesus Christ flowing through you. That would be weird. He fell in love with you. And in the Bible it talks about, like, what, what is the verse where it says, uh, it, no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. Like, you are God breathed. You, if your husband loves you, he loves something God breathed, mm -hmm. right? He didn't fall in love with you because you believed in Jesus. He fell in love with you because you're you. And you raise your children because they're part of both of you. Mm -hmm. Not because the Lord demands it or requires it or that the Bible says marriage is good. Like, And again, I'm not trying to flippantly talk about these things, but I really think one of the most fundamental needs as a person to feel fully alive and good and happy 
his personal growth and development mm-hmm. and uh, what is it Maslow's hierarchy self actualization self actualization questioning things is great it's mm-hmm. really good for your health it's mm-hmm. and, and there's nothing to be afraid of in the answer if your husband decides he's an atheist he might just be an atheist. That's Does that mean he's going to be like weird and do everything? I mean, weird? is he? Yeah, is he like sacrificing goats or? Probably not. But okay, so this is a, a, a conversation about deconstruction. Deconstruction, right? So deconstructing faith. So we grow up a certain way in the church and whatever, believing something, right? And then we kind of uh, mature, and we start to question things, and we look at it. Wait a minute. That's not right. Why, why is this done how it's done? Mm-hmm. This isn't right. This doesn't make sense. Oh, but these people I trusted. So that makes me question the bigger thing. Mm-hmm. And then it is just a questioning of things. And I remember like one exact moment. I was listening to this podcast and a, <clears throat> a, a musician was talking about his faith deconstruction thing. And I remember I was like really, really scared. I was like, what? Oh my goodness, you, he, he thinks that way, and, and now I have questions about that, and that's taken a long process. It took, I don't know, still questioning stuff, and that's okay. There's no timeline on it, right? And uh, I feel better for it, and I actually feel closer to God, to Creator, in that way when I started questioning all this stuff and figured out, oh, okay, it's going to be okay. And then one, one verse is my favorite, be still and know that I am God, and you just reduce that, be still and know be still, just be. God loves me for just who I am. Creator loves me for just who I am. And guess what? All I have to do is be. I have to worry about this and make everything black and white and figure out this and blah, blah, blah. Um, And one thing also is that which we hold on tightest is the thing that we actually need to let go of Mm -hmm. to be free. And I'm not saying like, oh, we're holding on to our faith so hard, just let go of it. Well, maybe I am kind of saying that. Just like let go and just be like mm-hmm. be still and know just be well and the thing that comes to mind too there's, there's a sort of random uh, thought there but is like the idea of once we think we actually know something and we create borders around it that that we we stop the thing itself from growing so let's say I go yeah plants only do X Y and Z thing and they never do anything else I might actually stop myself from learning that maybe this plant cures cancer maybe this plant uh, I don't know, like could be glue or something crazy. Can you focus? I'm super distracted. Uh, but so when we stop, when we begin to put boundaries on anything, whether that's what your child can do or not do, what your partner can or cannot do, what you can and cannot do, you will stop. You might stop something potentially bad from happening. Probably not. But more than likely, you will stop a lot of good from happening. By well, that can be confusing because you just said when we put boundaries. So obviously healthy boundaries are uh, Restrictions then. If I say, let me say it a different way, not boundaries. If I say, Seth, here is your, um, here is what you are capable of and here is what you're not welcome to do. Mm-hmm. And I restrict. Mm-hmm. If I restrict what I view you as, then you you can't even grow beyond my potential vision of what you are right. because I've restricted you down to... So oh, maybe, he only does this, and this is exactly what Christianity looks like, and this is how a Christian couple functions. Right. And th- you know, that's how I'm, that's how you were in the early part of our marriage. You were. <laughs> anyway, well, I yeah, hope that made sense. Yeah, kind of. And I, so this question, some like we we read questions and we're like, oh, okay, I really see what's you know two or three or four layers below the surface. It um, says, uh, I'm judge. Uh, he won't you're, talk you, to me about it because I'm probably judgmental and it scares me. Mm. And I heard a thing on a, a book I'm reading this morning about when we judge, we're actually putting up barriers because that's what we feel about ourselves, mm-hmm. and we don't we want we want to head people off at the pass. Well, I'm judgmental of you because I'm scared to death of you being judgmental of me. Are you talking about the big leap? No. What are you talking about? I'm finished with that one. I'm finishing up the Mel Robbins book. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Let's read comments really okay. quick. Let's see. I think part of why we may fall in love is... With a person is because of their love for God, depending on your belief. I totally get it. It's that fear of being married to a Christian and all of a sudden they find belief in God anymore and now it's uniquely, but unequally yoked thing that I don't think God calls for divorce in this situation at all, but it calls for a lot of prayer and your husband, God knows the end result. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And I think... Yeah, yeah, the concept of being unequally yoked is a thing that people talk about in Christian culture all right. the time, meaning a yoke is a thing that ties two cattle together, mm-hmm. um, like to pull a load, right? And guess what? People put it in the Christian context all the time, but guess what? 
if Melody is going on a hardcore diet and I'm like, forget that. I'm not, we're unequally yoked. Right? Busted. Excellent. That was great. If so if like, someone's doing a weight loss challenge and they don't even invite their I'm so sorry. spouse to do it, are they unequally yoked then? <laughs> <laughs> so if I have a growth mindset and I'm just crazy going after it, you know, and she's like, well, no, I'm going to sit over here and eat Doritos all day. We're unequally yoked. That right? Is a, so an do not point. take that out of context. Right. I'm not fussing at anybody, but do not take them out of context. You can be unequally yoked on eight pagrillion things and it just doesn't have to be like oh she's a christian i'm not you know it's mm -hmm. forever doomed and, right? and i will say this before so I, th I think the unequally yoked concept is valid i do agree with seth that sometimes it's used uh not in a way that's helpful because one of the things i think of is um and and just forgive us we are very progressive when it comes to these things so if it's bothering you deal <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the things that I think is if we're yoked in only the same way, we can only plow a field. If we unyoke and we learn to celebrate our differences, accept our, accept our differences, honor them and promote our linkages, we can build a house. We can build a city. We can do anything we want when we're unyoked and supportive right. of each other. If we're yoked, we can plow a field. I mean, okay, so yeah, let's get into specifics. She's not saying like, who cares? Do this, do that. Blah. No, it's... We're on the same page of a lot of things. We are we are equally yoked. How about this? Let me no. Let me say one thing. Sorry, I am not afraid of un hard, like unleashing what Seth has potential to become as a human all around. If that takes a few years of him questioning his faith, fine. I'm not afraid of that. If I truly am strong in Christ, or I believe in God, or I have a, a faith system that strengthens me, I can deal with that. Fine. Mm -hmm. And it is not him tearing our family apart, unless he's obviously tearing our family apart. Right. Totally different scenario. But I just want to, I want to like invite you to change the fear. I want you to really invite you to change the fear that's behind this. He's tearing everything apart. It's going to be terrible. What you focus on expands. You will find the ways that it's terrible if that's what you're focusing on. But what if you focus on, wow, in this journey, he's grown. He's become more loving or kinder or more accepting or whatever. And what if you focus on that? What if you focus on the positive throughout it? Because regardless, of whether he believes in God, God is everywhere, in my opinion, right? Like mm -hmm. leaves are God. Someone inventing a truck is God. Someone, you know, stars, clouds, Mount Rainier is God. And, and that's what I believe. And you can get mad at me all you want. But mm -hmm. I think that, that there's, there's nothing to be afraid of unless your partner is being a total jerk and tearing your marriage apart. But if right. he's not, don't say he is. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? it's like, screw the church, I'm out of here kind of thing. And I'm going to go cheat or do whatever. Mm -hmm. Then... Duh, that's not okay. That's yeah. that's that's hurtful. That's harmful, right? But some questions and growth. It's like me reading a book about growth mindset and saying, "Hey, Melanie, um, it seems like things are can be different from what I have believed for the last twenty five years. Uh -huh. What do you think about that?" And uh, I don't know. It's it's just it's just growth. And don't be scared. Of the growth, like somebody says, I will definitely fall in love with a guy because of love, his love of God. Right. That's cool. That's good for you. That's great. I mean, there's that's, no. That's and, probably but not the no, only. That's not the only thing. Like, okay, I definitely it, fell in love with Seth because I thought he was cute and he had a southern accent. Right. Zero so to do with God. Additional, <laughs> additional things. Like I remember, I had a checklist. I was like, okay, yeah, I prefer yeah. my wife to be a Christian. So that was important. His checklist. I also preferred that she was college ed educated. And also preferred that she had a growth mindset and was creative and artsy mm -hmm. and stuff, you know. So it's and not... there's room for everyone's story. So that's what right. I want to say. Kindness, acceptance is super, super, super important. Let's go on to the next question. It says, I "Kind of want to uh, talk to that." No, I don't. Okay. We can't. We don't understand the context, so we might be okay. messing things up. It says, "God, I keep." <laughs> no, just... you missed one. What are some tips oh. and tricks for successfully getting through a long distance marriage? My husband will be away for months at a time for work. We have two children and have been married for three years. Mm. So that is really, really challenging for one. Thank you for sending the question in. Mm -hmm. That is super hard. Actually, I'm going to do, uh, if you're listening or watching right now and you have a long distance relationship, please put any tips or ideas in the, in the comments and stuff like that because I think it's really important. But one of the things I think for sure is that you have to be super intentional about um, fostering, creating, and curating things that will... Uh, produce a connection because you're not physically together, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So things like having really intentional weekly 
calls about where you only talk about like the good things that are going on in your relationship and maybe that's literally all you do like you don't talk about anything else Mm -hmm. you don't talk about bills or kids or whatever like you just have a you know 20 minute set aside or an hour whatever it is to uh talk about those things and the reason i'm saying is that is because in in face-to-face relationships we have that uh sort of what is the word the dopamine drip Mm -hmm. we have the like physical contact produces a chemical response in our bodies and when we don't have that physical contact and we don't release those like love hormone chemicals it's more likely that we're going to just disengage slowly we're just going to slowly be like oh what do i, I don't even care mm-hmm. like i'm just busy doing my own thing right so that's what i'm saying is is create enti- intentional times where your only objective is dopamine drip talk about the vacations you've gone on things that you've done things you're looking forward to things you're excited about only foster intentionally the stuff that will create mm-hmm. that dopamine yeah I, I think that's a really good point and then also have conversations where okay i just need to vent to you and whatever maybe it's complain or work was hard xyz and then also have segmented uh conversations where like okay for the next 10 minutes let's talk about business like Mm -hmm. bills or this needs to be done and i think sometimes in long distance relationships sometimes both parties feel guilty and maybe some resentment like if the wife is stuck at home with the kids she's like you have no idea what my day was you know and then the husband's like okay you're going in months at a time you're lonely, mm-hmm. you might be alone or with other people working on something that you don't super care about, and you're stressed out, right? So both of you are going to have stressors, both of you are going to have heat, and I would encourage you to like take the time to process that and not go, well, you don't know what it's like, you know, mm-hmm. I wish you just knew, or mm-hmm. or whatever like that. So sometimes, so and, then, and then there's also some guilt around, like, oh, I am working here, and like, they put me up in a nice hotel room and like she's at home with the kids mm-hmm. and we're just barfed that like yeah. I have felt stressed out because I know that you are having a more harder that a harder time like when I went to Abu, Abu Dhabi right that was awesome I loved every second of it in Germany eating Frankfurters although like and... it was like super stressful but I also understand that you were here holding stuff down and you uh, you know air quotes allowed me to go you know that was awesome or same thing when you went to Denver I'm like you're chilling. You're like getting your cup filled, like, you know, learning all these great things. And I'm here, you know, with barfing kids or whatever, you know. So really pay attention to that. Where do you have resentment about it? Are you happy? Can I be happy that you go to Denver? Can you mm-hmm. be happy that I'm in uh, Dubai or whatever? Mm-hmm. I think the answer to both of those questions is yes. Mm-hmm. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, and I think, too, that there, there's a way where we can actively honor those the roles that someone else is playing. That we, like Seth is saying, it's not like... Uh, well, let me say it this way. When I was home with the kids and you were in Dubai, there was not, I was never like, jerk, he's in Dubai, idiot. I was just like, I'm home with the kids, whatever. Like, it, mm-hmm. it wasn't, I was not upset about him being gone. I think he thought I was going to be, though. Yes. I think you did feel very guilty because you're like exploring and traveling and I was just home. I felt kind of guilty. Not, not like super. But, but let me say, why I'm bringing that up is that I think that potential, uh, like potential for you to feel guilty mm-hmm. made it so that you were timid in being like, you know, you could have just been like, Melanie, I'm so thankful that you're like every day mm-hmm. that I talk to you, you could have said, right. you could have had a script and I would have never gotten tired of it. I'm so thankful that you're letting me travel to Dubai. I hope you had an amazing day with the mm-hmm. kids. You're such a strong wife. It's really fun that you're this kind of mom. Like we can be encouraging each other actively in a way that is completely and it's not natural, but it's life giving mm-hmm. when we're not together. Um, and I, we had a long distance relationship when we were dating and mm-hmm. engaged, and it was the worst thing ever because mm. we had no skills to we do were both these dummies, things. That's why <laughs> we were jerks. So we were right. very uh, selfish. Okay, let's read some of this stuff. My wife and I have been married for twelve years. Met online, long distance, Romania and oh. California. We wow. chat and talk with each other consistently, at least once every day. Yes, you mm. gotta, you gotta get that. If that works for you, like I know couples that. Like, one of our buddies goes on tour, and, like, he talks to his wife, like, once a week. They don't care. But it it works for them. (laughs) Yeah, another one says, uh, talk about your everyday life. Flirt. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mention your struggles as well. Share feelings. Involve your spouse. Mm -hmm. I love this. Text, FaceTime, snaps all the technology. Yep. Um, Let's see. 
We have so many means of communication. Use it all. Yep, 100%. Yep. Listen to the same podcast. Oh, oh that's, that's a, a great, great idea. You know, hey, did you catch the Anatomy of Marriage podcast yeah, this morning? Yeah, that is a really great idea. Listen to the same. It, actually, Seth and I do that often. I didn't even think about that. We, we read all the same book. Yeah, usually I will read a book and then I'll say, hey, have you blah, blah, blah. And then he'll read it just after I do. So then we mm-hmm. have these things to talk about every single day because as he gets through the chapters, I've just gone through them. So that's a really great idea. Find things in common that really bring you joy We're, and talk about them. yoked in the books we read. We have yoke books. <laughs> I'm yoked. Boom! Okay. <laughs> that was good. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this last thing is from the women's group and I just thought it was hilarious and I wanted to share it. And this is to encourage you to join our private Facebook pages because they're hilarious. Well, the women's group is hilarious sometimes anyway. Yeah. Uh, but someone wrote, Gah! I just keep losing my patience with my husband. He just knows how to push my buttons. This time about broccoli. Yes, you read that correctly, folks. An argument about broccoli, because he hates broccoli and I have dinner planned with broccoli and he doesn't like broccoli, so he doesn't want to buy buy it. Just buy the broccoli and you're welcome for this laugh. (laughs) Okay, that's funny. Um, I think that your husband... He's a nice guy, he just didn't want to buy it. I know, I know, I'm not saying, oh, you jerk. Sometimes we internalize things and, and we think that, oh, well, you're buying broccoli, and I told you I didn't like it, but you're doing it anyway, so you take it as an affront, you know? You used to do the, all that you used to do that to me all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I, know I didn't saying, even think about yeah. it. It literally had nothing to do with you. Yeah. It that's just was, right? So maybe your husband is kind of thinking of it that this way. This isn't a question. Maybe. I'm just sharing it. Oh, well, okay, it's a thing. So <laughs> it's not it, a question. sure, it's funny, but I want I want you, wife, whoever you are, to be like I'm buying the freaking broccoli. Shut no, up. he's at the store. Oh. He was at the store and didn't want to buy the broccoli. That's then what she's saying. If he came saying. home with no broccoli and I said, hey, get the broccoli, I would say, hold this baby. Where are my keys? I'm I have a better broccoli. idea. Make him a shirt that says hashtag broccoli. What sound know. was that? I don't know. A ghost. Okay. Anyway, so, the, okay. Thank you for joining us today. We want to wrap up. Uh, I want to request something first, though. So we are in the process of doing, I mean, we've been so busy with a bunch of stuff. We're working on the app, which I'm so excited about. We're getting our premarital series like finally wrapped up. And what I am wanting from y'all is if you want to have your face, like you and your partner's face on our uh, little, what's it called? Like our intro, outro reel thing, like our little video thing. It's like a tiny square on a bunch, like a grid. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you'll be front and center. But if you want that, send us like a teensy video or a still image of you and your partner and we will put it in that. I I think it'd just be so cool to make our background thing, um, Uh, uh, all our listeners, listeners. right? So this is what it would look like. So if you're on the podcast, you can't see this, but if you're on Insta Live or Facebook, it's like this. Like two, like it's a little video of you waving, or right. like you and you, I mean, it's not like a, a video. video sorry, a video or a still, and just a comment about the podcast. Like, well, you don't need to comment because I'm going to use reviews. Ooh. Super excited okay, about that. So awesome yeah, if you have like, it can be a picture, but a video, like a literally a ten second video, would be awesome if you want to have your face on the thing. If you don't, that's fine. Right. Um, but it's just fun, and we're but we're doing it really soon, so we need it like today. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're doing it, send that to us, and we'll remind you later too. But um, the other thing, too, is if you have not rated and reviewed the podcast, but you enjoy our show, please go ahead to iTunes and rate and review the podcast. Thank you to everybody who has rated and reviewed the show and left us kind remarks. It makes us feel amazing, but it also is extremely helpful in people trusting that our show is worth listening to. Right. So please go ahead to iTunes and do that if you haven't yet. And thank you to everybody who has. All right, guys. Chill out and have a good day. Is it not? Hmm? Something else. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I feel like we forgot something. Did we forget something? No, I don't think so. Hashtag okay. broccoli. Hashtag okay, broccoli. Guys, hope you enjoy the show. Catch you tomorrow morning. And thank you for the tips for um, partners, long distance partners. Those are rad tips. Our community yeah, is really better good. than any other community. <laughs> what was that time signature? Our community is better than any other community. <laughs> What do you think about Five plus four. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Our community is better.